Today we're talking about taxes, because I know how to have a good time. This round of democratic politicians think that the winning ticket is in raising taxes. Finally guys, we crunched the numbers and found something Americans hate more than going to the doctor to advocate for. Surprisingly enough, and actually not that surprising if this were any other country, but proposals to raise taxes on the wealthy have recently become fairly popular, with three main policies emerging. We have Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax policy, Bernie Sanders' estate tax policy, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's famous 70% marginal income tax proposal that made everybody lose their minds for exactly 24 hours until they remembered how boring taxes tend to be. Today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of these three different strategies, starting with Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax. There's the whole taxing the wealthy issue, presidential candidate <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren proposing this annual 2% tax on household wealth above $50 million, and an additional 1% tax on wealth above $1 billion. Okay, so the plan is every dollar an individual American owns above $50 million is subject to a 2% tax. And every dollar a person owns above a billion dollars is subject to a 3% tax. Now that might sound about as controversial as taking a second penny from the take a penny leave a penny jar, but as we'll get to in a second, its controversies span from the economic to the straight up constitutionality of it, making this tax program have about as much of a chance of passing as it does of ever applying to me. First, the positives. Though it's predicted that this policy could raise $3 trillion over the next decade, which is 150% of the current debt increase under Trump, it also doesn't increase taxes on income. So if you plan to work hard to make it to the top, well, this plan will be a lot easier on your wallet than if your plan is to have an ancestor who long ago worked hard to make it to the top. Also, wealth taxes are found to do more to relieve inequality than raising income taxes. So if you want to get to the side benefit of lowering inequality, focus your energy less on the people working to earn billions and instead on those who are already there. So before everybody hops on that war in 2020 ticket, here's why people don't like this plan. Wealth taxes, because they're actually very hard to implement and to do with any kind of meaningful way. If you're talking about people with $50 million, um, they're going to find ways around this in a way that really shrivel up the amount of money that it actually raises. For this plan to work at all effectively, you need to assume that billionaires keep their money in a Scrooge McDuck style vault, where you can just count your cash and see if you have over $50 million that year or not. In reality, rich people buy expensive things, and unless the government wants to keep the pawn stars and property brothers on retainer, I think this might be a little hard to calculate. I mean, people to this day can't properly estimate how much the current president is worth because so much of his value is wrapped up in a private company whose value constantly fluctuates. For tax purposes, how much is my priceless Picasso collection worth? I think priceless means free. So what, audit all people you suspect of being rich every time tax season comes around? Another problem is that this will probably incentivize the ultra wealthy to invest their money overseas, which would be great for Italy and other countries whose public bookkeeping methods peaked around the time of the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, and there's also the problem I teased earlier of. You know, there's a pragmatic problem with it. There's a constitutional issue because yes. it's, it generally is considered a type of direct tax that the Constitution forbids. Which is, is now, it's no surprise that a nation founded essentially on getting angry about paying taxes would go over its tax code in its founding documents. So what does the Constitution say about taxes? Well, I won't even bother reading the original because, trust me, mid-17th century scholars writing tax code Whew, it's really, really confusing and reads like the author of Beowulf decided to write a business school textbook. Basically, according to Article 1, Section 9, Clause 4, that's right, we're getting specific, the Constitution says you can't directly tax someone more than the percent of the population they represent based on their state. Basically, if America wanted to levy a direct tax to raise $100, Californians would be on the hook to pay 12% of it, because they're 12% of the population. In fact, the only reason we can currently pay an income tax is because in 1913 we passed a constitutional amendment 
that said that the federal government can directly tax income. Now, because of this, we'd probably need to amend the Constitution again to even begin considering this wealth tax as a legitimate option. So next, to Bernie Sanders' plan. So far we've got an income tax, a wealth tax, and now an estate tax. Bernie Sanders proposing an estate tax that would be the highest in over 50 years. An estate tax. The type of plan that hears the quote, nothing is inevitable except death and taxes and asks, why not combine the two? Now you might be saying to yourself, wait, that sounds pretty unconstitutional as well. The big difference is that the estate tax is, for legal purposes, not considered a direct tax, but rather an indirect tax on the transfer of wealth. Now this estate tax would be, on paper, pretty similar to a wealth tax, but because it doesn't require the government assessing the wealth of every one of its citizens every year and then taxing them accordingly, the pros and cons are different because it's much less of a logistical nightmare. It's a little harder to predict how much money this plan could pay out because we're not exactly sure when Jeff Bezos is going to kick the bucket. And the death that, under this plan, could fully fund the military for a year with a few billion left over. Now, there are four phases where rates would rise in this proposal that I won't spend a ton of time on. Considering that, if any of this affects you, chances are you probably have an accountant on retainer. The main thing is that this returns the smallest affected estate to the 2009 levels of $3.5 million, which again, unfortunately doesn't affect me as I am in the bottom 99.8% of Americans. Although, like and subscribe and maybe we can get me there. If you're inheriting more than $3.5 million worth of assets though, anything above that $3.5 million threshold will be taxed at a minimum of 45%. Not sure why it didn't start with a clean half, but maybe this is the policy equivalent of a $4.99 price tag. So first, the positives. The big question. How much would it raise? Well, revenues from the estate tax have fallen from about $35 billion a year in 2000 to less than $20 billion in 2018. It's expected to fall to only $6 billion by 2025. $6 billion by 2025? That's just enough to begin building a border wall, making this an almost pointlessly low source of revenue. That estimate was under the current tax reform plan in which Trump gutted the estate tax. This plan could, in theory, increase tax revenue from the wealthiest few without affecting high-income individuals or wealthy people who actually earned it, only the individual set to inherit that money. One of the biggest groups hurt by this tax is generally farmers, because they own massive tracts of land that get passed down from generation to generation, but don't have a ton of cash to pay appropriate estate taxes on that land, which, I mean, that's really messed up. This plan would allow farmers to significantly write down the value of their land in order to avoid paying this tax. Other than that, we already have an estate tax system, so increasing rates and qualifications would be pretty easy without having shocks to the system. The main unaddressed knocks against this form of taxation are, it's really, really easy to avoid by putting your money into a trust. Rich people, hope you weren't listening right there. And whoops, some people have moral apprehensions about taking money from grieving families. Which, yeah, can't really change the optics on that one too much. The final plan on this list is... Your tax rate, you know, let's say from zero to $75,000 may be 10% or 15%, etc. But once you get to like the tippy tops, uh, on your 10 millionth dollar, uh, sometimes you see tax rates as high as 60 or 70 percent. Yes, my representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has her own tax hike idea, increasing the marginal income tax rate for the highest earners. In super representative measure of effecticity, the Warren 2 percent wealth tax on people with over 50 million dollars and 3 percent wealth tax for above 1 billion dollars would raise 3 trillion dollars, while AOC's 70 percent marginal tax for every dollar earned after 10 million dollars would only bring in about 300 billion, which is 10 percent of Warren's proposed tax revenue stream. So yeah, you want to stick it to the rich, 2% on wealth beats the heck out of 70% on income. 
As I'm sure you've heard, America has quite a long history of top marginal tax rates to the point where it was 90% in the 60s. We were doing all sorts of crazy stuff back then. And at or above 70% for half of the last century. Point is, during those times, the country didn't burn down, and most people suspect that that was the greatness time Trump was referring to. Positive here, it wouldn't be too hard to implement this strategy, and it probably wouldn't have the largest effect on our economy. But now to the negatives. Top rate of 70%, which would be highest in the world. Higher than communist China, higher than everybody else. Yes, this would be an extreme marginal tax rate that some fear would push the uber rich out of America. The logic would be that it's better to have a 40% income tax rate on multi-millionaires as opposed to a 70% income tax rate on… oh wait, they all moved away. Since the 80s, it hasn't just been America loosening our top tier income taxes, but the entire world. So if the United States were to unilaterally raise those taxes, rich people might just leave. People also argue that a better solution than raising taxes on the uber rich is to fix loopholes, something that mm, we should probably already be doing considering that last time I checked, a loophole is literally defined by its unintentional ability to allow someone to avoid an obligation. Lastly, people suspect that this will just push more money into offshore accounts to obscure its existence, to which Paul Manafort said, Wait, we weren't supposed to be doing that yet? No wonder you're sending me to prison. So those are the three competing tax proposals floating through the Democrat zeitgeist right now. Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax proposal, Bernie Sanders' estate tax proposal, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's 70% marginal income tax proposal. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.